habitat you see here behind me is referred to as scrubby flatwoods. It's made up of mostly saw palmetto, sparse pine, and uh, lots of different scrub oaks, um, wire grass you can see growing, and it's, it's generally higher than wet flatwoods or even dry or dry flatwoods. It's got a sandy substrate, drains water very well, and it's a very big habitat for gopher tortoises. You can see in the scrubby flatwoods that it supports a diverse species of herbaceous plants as well as shrubs. See some scrub oaks and saw palmetto, some wire grass, some broom sedge. This area is recommended to burn every 5 to 15 years. You can see there's a lot of snags. Which isn't a bad thing. They support life too. Take a look at the vegetation differences in these two different management units. You can see the shrubs are very high here. Um, there's not a lot of grass in the more uh, shrubby areas. But if you look over here, This area was burned recently, maybe two months ago. Uh, and you can see that the grasses are coming in already, the palmettos have recovered. And it's just a cleaner and more diverse habitat. So now we're walking through some Messick flatwoods, Messick pine flatwoods. They're dry most of the year, but they can't hold water. They tend to uh, drain water very well but it's main coverage is saw palmetto and in this particular flatwoods the southern slash pine has sparse coverage um, I like to call the southern slash pine the super pine because it's res extra resistant to drought and flooding and uh, it's also called the Dade Pine. It was logged extensively for its strong heartwood, which is insect resistant or pest resistant. <clears throat> but uh, this is kind of like the uh, nature's pasture land because a lot of the mammals come here to graze on all the different abundant species of grasses. You have wire grass here. You've got Elliot's yellow flower here. Lots of different wildflowers. There's a couple of species that, uh, a couple of species of lilies that are federally or state listed as endangered. The Catesby's lily is state endangered, and, and the uh, celestial lily is actually federally endangered. And it's found here at this site in Cypress Creek, and couple other sites in Martin, Palm Beach, and I think it might go south to Broward, but it's a federally endangered species, and uh, it's definitely a di diverse habitat. It needs to be burned about two to four years to uh, maintain its diversity, and you see these palmettos behind me are very low-lying, and uh, helps for them not to take over and there could still be some grasses growing. The northern bobwhite quail is a species that prefers the palmettos or shrubby habitat for their shelter and nesting area. Um, it's a very important species for Florida. A lot of research goes into them. Bad hog damage, very severe hog damage right here. Um, they come in here and they root around looking for larvae or grubs or even roots and um, they can be very destructive to a habitat as you can see. Nothing is growing here right now. It'll come back but the more hogs there are the more this you have. 
and uh, sometimes you have to trap them in order to get rid of this kind of damage. Just taking a closer look at this area between the palmettos. Look at all the different plants and grasses there are here. You can see some dog fennel, wire grass. There's the Elliot's yellow flower. See some good fire evidence here. One thing cool about these trees is they're self pruning. So they drop their lower branches and they get rid of that ladder fuel so it doesn't ladder doesn't travel up the trunk and into the crown and create a crown fire which can kill the tree. It's a pretty cool flower called the gay feather. The only way or there's two ways to reach this level of diversity in the pine flower woods and number one is fire. This has been burned about a year ago and you can see that everything has come back great and very well spread out in diverse habitat. Another way is mechanical chopping. I'll show you an area later that has been mechanically chopped. Here we're walking through some pine flatwoods. It's uh, recently been mechanically chopped. You can notice some of the mulching that's been done over here and it's chopped with a piece of heavy equipment with a big mulching head on the end of it and it gets rid of smaller trees and some shrubs. I've recently been chopped, I'd say about one month ago, and already you can see a lot of the herbaceous things coming back in. We've got some grapevine, some shrubs already growing back. Um, the reason they do this is because it's either too heavy with fuel or the palmettos are taken over, or there's too dense pine growth. There's a few different reasons they might do it, but it does actually benefit the habitat. Um, before you wouldn't be able to burn with a lot of heavy fuels. There's less fuel food for the wildlife, and uh, it's really, it cleans up the fire break, which is running right along here, and helps with safety in case of a wildfire. But you can see some of this other shrub and how high it goes. That's actually a, called a ladder fuel. The fire can start down here, then work its way up and reach all the way to the top of the pine trees, creating a uh, <clears throat> crown fire, which is very dangerous. Some uh, recently burned pine flatwoods here. You can see the grass coming back. Palmettos are going to come back too. I'm in a sand pine scrub right now. And the sand, it's interesting about the sand pine is it is, it contains a serotonous cone that requires extreme heat or fire to open and disperse its seeds. There's a lot of lichen, or otherwise known as deer moss, growing inside this sand scr pine scrub. Sand pine scrub can be a savior on a hot day. I've been out here doing a gopher tortoise survey and came across the some sand, a couple sand pine trees and I walked under them and it was like stepping into a cooler as opposed to the open scrub.